Greetings, I'm Lee, your humble game master, with another humble game overview. This time, Thirteenth Age. Thirteenth Age is a D20 derivative game written by Jonathan Tweet and Rob Heinsu, which is an amalgam of basically every other edition of Dungeons and Dragons ever. If every edition of D&D had an intergenerational orgy, Thirteenth Age would be the bastard offspring. Thirteenth Age takes a lot from its inbred parents, but also offers uh, a lot that's new, or has taken a lot from more modern narrative-based games. I really like Thirteenth Age. I, in many ways, prefer it to Dungeons & Dragons and other derivatives, and I thought I'd give a bit of an overview to explain why. So, firstly, what is the same with Thirteenth Age? It uses a d20. If you've played Dungeons and Dragons and you know about hit points and elves and dwarves and barbarians and all that sort of thing, there's a lot that's very familiar in here. What is interesting is what's different. Firstly, what's different is the icons system. Icons are those big NPCs that everybody hates in most other games. They are your Elminsters, your certain drow rangers with the two swords doing the kung fu thing that nobody really likes or everybody likes. I don't really keep on top of these things anymore. Um, they're your Gladriels. They are your they are your high kings. The icons are 13 figures, movers and shakers in the world that in some way are a force to be reckoned with. What makes this different from the big NPCs of other campaign settings is that they are very broad archetypes. They go by names like the Crusader, the Orc Lord, the Emperor, the High Druid, the Archmage. Uh, they are designed to be integrated into the game in a way that the players and the game master agree upon. So each campaign of 13th Age is going to have a different iteration about how these characters work. They are active in the world, but they need agents and people to further their goals. And this is where the players, how the players come into this. Players are affiliated with icons, positively, negatively, and um, neither. Um, sort of conflicted and depending on dice rolls at the beginning of each session that relationship can come up and characters will find themselves driven into plots that are not necessarily dictated by the icons but are driven by the icons goals you are if you are allied with an icon it is because you are furthering what they believe because it matches what you believe in a way. So it's a very good dynamic force in the game. It gives you and the players a great way of customising the game world because no two portrayals of the icons, even the same icon, is going to be the same. And it allows you to have those influential NPCs without stomping all over the players' um, actions um, and taking away from them and uh, what they want to do. Then we have one unique thing. One unique thing is the special snowflake rule of 13th age. When you create your character, you do everything else the same. You, you make your stats, you, you pick your background, you pick your race, your class, your special abilities. But you also pick one unique thing about your character. Now, this could be anything um, and depending on the style of game it could be something silly it could be something whimsical or it could be something serious but what it is is something that's unique to your character now it doesn't have to be so unique that it's not repeatable but in the grand scheme of the drama it is pretty unique to you and um, no other player character would have it and if another npc has it it is for plot reasons it could be something like uh, my heart was removed and replaced with a clockwork created by the dwarves. It could be something like 
I'm the only elf with human ears. So it ranges from the, the cool and the, you know, there's a couple of plot ideas around a dwarven mechanical heart to the, the bored, if somewhat silly, um, I, I've got a slightly different feature than other members of my race. But there are plenty of examples in, in the books that, that range from all different levels. And it tells you how to deal with the very high powered ones that some people might come up with through outright saying no or through negotiating to kind of drill down and see what they really want from it to something just really kind of straightforward that maybe requires a little bit of development to see what the player really wants from it. If a player says, my my character has a magic sword, well, that, that's uh, okay. But if it, you know, I inherited my father's sword because only members of a certain bloodline can wield it, well, that's pretty unique, and there's, there's some plot hooks around that. Uh, this also leads into the skill system for 13th Age, which is backgrounds. Other D20 games, you allocate skill points from a set list to your your character, and these allow you to perform certain tasks better than people who would be unskilled. The background system in 13th Age is very similar, only you do not have skills from a set list. You essentially have a number of points you allocate to backgrounds, which are one-sentence descriptions about your character that would include some background element in it. For example, you could have uh, Mountain Born as a background, and that would allow you to put points into that to, to climb, to survive in the mountains, to endure the cold, to find shelter in caves. You could have City Watchman, um, and that would allow you to put points into that and use it when you are um, patrolling the streets, trying to figure out the laws of a local city maybe trying to understand some of the criminals of the city, um, where would criminals usually hide things, that sort of thing. Um, master uh, Thief could be another interesting one, although as you can see some could be pretty broad and like one unique things. There has to be a little bit of negotiation with the Game Master to sort of figure out how broad they can be or how specific they can be, and there are lots of great examples in the book and it does have guidelines for if the player says, my background is, I'm good at everything. Um, and again, that can range from saying no to trying to be a little bit clever with it and figure out how to uh, uh, make it interesting for both you and the player involved. Then you have Escalation Die. One of the criticisms of many D20 games is combat drags on. There's a back and a forth, hit points get chipped away, and it can be pretty dull. 13th Age has a way of combating that, which is you, after the first round of combat, you get the biggest six-sided dice you can find and you put it on the top of the, uh, in the middle of the table, on top of something high. And you put it at one. And all of the players will get plus one to their next d20 roll for an attack, be that through uh, casting a spell, hitting with a sword, whatever. The next round, you move it to a two, and they get plus two to those actions then plus three, then plus four, all the way up to plus six. So as the fight goes on and momentum builds, the players start hitting more and more. This means fights generally only last about six rounds or less, because at that point the players can't miss and they begin to start really hammering their foes. The escalation die is good for a few reasons. The first is that as the combat goes on and the momentum builds, the players start hitting more and more often, meaning that fights end a lot quicker than they would in other versions of the D20 system. It means as momentum builds, the players really start taking it to their opponent, and eventually what would be a drawn-out fight ends quickly and hopefully in a satisfactory way. The other thing I really like about it is that powerful abilities, if you kind of hold on to them until later in the fight, you've got more chance of using them because you've got a better chance of hitting. So this almost encourages that dramatic thing you see in movies where they don't use their best attacks until later in the fight because it's more dramatic, but the game mechanic behind this is you're more likely to hit if you give it a few turns. So a wizard could open up with a couple of minor spells, and then once they've got a, a plus four from the escalation die, really amp it up and throw a really powerful spell that they know is going to uh, 
that settle the score. Uh, and this again really speeds up combat and it gives it a really good dramatic edge and sense of pacing. Those are some of the things I really like about 13th Age. It's got a lot of other great things. It's very narrative. It The book is written in a very great style that really, it's almost like a conversation between you and the designer. So you know why they did certain things or how they did it. And it even shows their disagreements about certain rules. You know, they're far from unified, the writers of 13th Age. And they'll tell you exactly how they do it differently. Um, the world is... It's very loosely defined. It's called the Dragon Empire. It's very loosely defined. It's got enough to kind of get you going, but it doesn't define things down to every little building in a city, every little tree in a forest. It's yours to do with what you want. And even the stuff they have written, they outright tell you, we change this in our games. Now, I know, no matter what game you're playing, be that Forgotten Realms, Vampire the Masquerade, whatever, you have every single right to change the things that you don't like or you want to do differently. What's so refreshing though is in 13th Age they expect you to do it, they outright tell you to do it, and they even show you them doing it themselves, and that's really encouraging uh, as a GM. It gives you a great sense of creative control, and it even welcomes the players through the one unique thing, through their icon relationships and through their backgrounds, to build the world with you. So every game of 13th Age is going to be different, even if you did a pre-written adventure from 13th Age, it would be different the next time you run it, just because of the icon relationships and the world it's set in would change. I love all those things. Um, I love it more than Dungeons and & Dragons and other derivatives like Pathfinder, because of its flexibility, because of the freedom it gives you. And because of that sense of pacing in combat, it doesn't sweat the small stuff. It just tells you to get on with it and have a great time telling stories. And I really love that as a game master. So check out 13th Age. I'll put a link to Pelgrane Press's website below so you can check out for yourself. Uh, and until next time, have a great game.